we're diving into a fantastic DIY project, we're turning scrap wood into cash. If you're looking for a simple, fun, eco-friendly way to create something amazing while earning extra money, I've got you covered. I'm excited to share my top selling creations, charming cutting boards or breadboards crafted from leftover wood. These fly off the shelves and they're endlessly customizable from classic to quirky. I've got styles for every taste. Plus, you can up the profit game by using salvaged or free wood from your stash. This is a full step-by-step -step tutorial that covers everything. Whether you're a crafting newbie or a seasoned pro, this tutorial's got you covered. And don't click away early. I've got a ton of fantastic projects in this video. So settle in, let me show how you can make some extra cash with this DIY. I've already cut a bunch of these up and I like to do them in all random sizes. I've sanded them and distressed them. They're ready to be finished, but I'm gonna take you along now and do my last board that I have and show you how I do it. I have a old cutting board that I use as a template. I don't use it in my kitchen anymore. It's only just strictly out here in my shed. And I just put it down on this piece of wood. You can use any kind of wood to make these. Actually, the more broken and knots and cracks in it, I think the prettier they are. It just gives it more character. I just lay it on my board where I want it. And this is just a pen. You can use a pencil. You're gonna really sand it afterwards. So you're gonna sand all of this off. And I just trace it along. And then when I want to do the length of it, I just pick, I always do random lengths, but I just use the end of the cutting board and I just draw a line along the bottom of it to cut. Now to cut your wood, the easiest thing is to use a jigsaw they're, and they're really easy to use. If you don't have one, I picked this up at Canadian Tire, it's the Mastercraft. You don't need anything fancy, you just need to get the job done and cut it. And I always wear um, some work gloves and some eye protection. And as far as using tools, I'm self-taught. It's, uh, I, my husband's helped me out a little bit to show me, how, you know, when I first got started, but it's really simple and you shouldn't be intimidated if you've never used any power tools like this before, because after you've done it a couple of times, it's really easy. And I am not a carpenter or a pro woodworker at all. This is just very rustic and I just do what it takes to get the job done. Now I'm just gonna take my jigsaw and cut out where I've traced. That's it for cutting the board and don't throw these out. I cut them with my chop saw into squares or rectangles and turn them into signs also. Now that I've got the first one cut, I'm gonna use up the rest of the board and just cut up the rest of the cutting boards. We got them all cut out. Next step is to really distress them. I like them so they look aged and used and the corners are all kind of rounded. And I just do that with a hammer. I just go crazy with a hammer, banging it. I use this end and put little holes in it around the edge. As you can see, I really banged it up with a hammer around the sides. And now we're ready to sand. I'm just using a palm sander. This came from Princess Auto in Canada. Works perfect. You don't need a real expensive one. You just need one that sands. And this is a really heavy grit. I want to really distress this. This is 50 grit. You can start off with an 80 and see how it works for you. I just know that I like mine really rustic, so I start right off with the 50 grit. Mm -hmm. 
I've got them all sanded down. I like when the edges are kind of smooth. And now we're ready to drill a hole in the top. I've just got my drill and a big drill bit and I'm just gonna drill down the center on all the boards. And I've got them all done and they're ready to be finished. These cutting boards, breadboards, um, are only for decor. I don't make these so they're food grade. If you know more about that, then that's something that you could do. But um, I'm not really sure about the different kind of wood that you should use if you're going to be putting food on it or the different types of oil that would be food grade. That would be something that you would want to look into and make sure you're using the right products. These are sold just as decor and a lot of them I'm going to be doing painting techniques and stuff like that on that they wouldn't be able to use them for serving food on anyways. My favorite way to finish these is to stain them. And this is actually a, uh, a wood stain that I picked up in the oops section. It was a mist tint and it was a couple dollars. So it was a great deal. And it's a really nice dark, almost black color. I just finished staining one already. And I love the way that it turned out. And you can see how it accents all those little places where I hit with the hammer and makes it look really old. I'm going to do some of these in the stain. I'm going to paint some of them. I'm going to do different techniques on a bunch of them. I'll come back when they're all done and I'll show you all the different ideas that you can do with these boards. So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to paint with my homemade black chalk paint. Going to give it a really good coat and then let it dry. Now I'm going to add some of this beautiful yellow chalk paint. I just want it as a contrast color because I'm going to do a crackling technique and I want that yellow and the black to peek through. We're going to do the hairspray method. If you haven't tried this, you need to try. It gives it a real kind of light crackling. It's not like the Elmer's glue where you have a really thick crackle. This is more of a natural fine crackle and it's really easy. You spray on the hairspray, let it dry, and then you paint acrylic paint on top of it. And as you dry it, those crackles will appear. I have a full tutorial on that too. Again, it'll be down in the description. Now this is completely dry and as you can see, all those little crackles. It leaves a really fantastic surface for you to do your signs on or any of your DIY projects. I have this fabulous farmhouse theme graphic that I'm going to put on using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Using my Mod Podge mat, I'm going to put a light coat over that whole paper and then put it on my project and let it sit for 24 hours until it's completely dry. This is just done on regular computer paper on my laser jet printer. All the graphics that I'm using today on all my projects are available in my Etsy store. If you want to use any, make sure you use the code SAVE50 and one of the files is already reversed so you're ready to go. And then I'm going to seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer. Now I am a collector of bits and pieces, never throw anything away. This was in my stash. I actually have no idea even what it is, but I thought it looked really pretty on this sign. So I'm gonna glue it down with some E6000, finish this cutting board off beautifully. I love it. Now let's get started on the next cutting board. Another coat of that black homemade chalk paint as my base coat. Whenever I'm doing projects like this, I always like a darker base coat. I think it peeks through nice when you're distressing it. I'm gonna use some candle wax. This is just a pillar candle from the dollar store. Anywhere where you put wax, that paint is not going to adhere very well and stick. So when you sand it down, it will leave that rustic look. This one, I'm gonna put a ticking stripe on it. Just kind of creating a stencil with some painter's tape and put a nice stripe down the middle of this cutting board. This is a really easy technique. Anybody can do it just with some painter's tape and some black chalk paint and create a really fun farmhouse cutting board. Just make sure you have your tape on straight and you've measured it and it'll turn out perfect. And I love peeling off that tape after it's all dried and leaving a nice crisp line on your project. We're going to seal it up with some water-based polyacrylic sealer 
and such a simple technique, but it creates a really pretty cutting board. On to the next one. This is a longer one, and I love making them a little bit longer. Again, we're putting on that black chalk paint as our base, and I had some spindles in my shed. I cut them down and turned them into feet, and I'm gonna turn this into a centerpiece for a table. I'm gonna paint all those legs with that black homemade chalk paint so it'll match the cutting board. And then I'm going to glue them on to the back of the board using some E6000. I'm also gonna add a little bit of hot glue so I can keep them in place and they won't move around. Because this is gonna be on a kitchen table, I'm gonna seal it really well with a couple coats of that polyacrylic sealer and love the way that it turned out. And those little legs from the spindles just finished it off perfectly. So many ideas you can do with these cutting boards. Next one, again, we're putting on that base of that black homemade chalk paint. And I'm going to print on fabric. If you haven't seen that tutorial, make sure you check that out. I'll put the link down below in the description. It's a really fun tutorial where you can take a piece of fabric and put it through your printer and actually print right on the fabric and then use it for any of your DIY projects. I'm gonna create a little pocket for this cutting board that we can put some flowers in and it's gonna look adorable. I'm gonna use some fabric glue to glue the sides in and the bottom and fold over the top so we can create that pocket. And then I'm gonna hot glue it onto the cutting board. This was just a piece of a old pillowcase that I had thrifted quite a while ago from the thrift store that I'm using to create this little pocket. And I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun and glue that fabric onto that cutting board. And there we have an adorable cutting board with a little fabric pocket that you can put some faux flowers or some dried flowers in. I love it. So hang in there with me. I have so many different ideas of what you can do with these cutting boards. The next one, I've mixed up some of my homemade stain. I have a full tutorial on how to make that. I'll list it down below in the description. But I just kind of want to give this a little bit of an aged wood look. I love this coffee house uh, graphic, and I'm going to use the polyacrylic sealer to do the transfer method with. This works good if you wanna use raw wood or you wanna have that wood color underneath. I find when you use the Mod Podge on raw wood, you can kind of see the outline width of it, and the polyacrylic, you don't see that as much. It doesn't transfer as well sometimes, so we're gonna see how it works out, but I want to keep that wood look underneath that graphic. I'm just applying the polyacrylic sealer, it's the water-based, right onto that graphic. We're going to center it onto our project, make sure it's right where we want it, and then set it aside and let it dry completely. Now that it's all dry, it works the exact same as the Mod Podge transfer. Just take a little bit of water, dampen it until you can start to see the graphics, and then rub the paper off. Now this thing started to give me a little bit of a headache and the graphics were starting to rub off. That's what I said, sometimes it can be a little bit fussy, but once I got it done, I actually loved it. I think it turned out really rustic and really chippy looking. I'm gonna seal it up and keep it as is. I love this one. I think this one's gonna stay in my house, in my kitchen. Even for it turning out really rustic and chippy and some of the graphics rubbing off, love the effect of it. This is one of the cutting boards that I stained in my first video, just with that dark black color. And I'm just gonna put a stencil in the corner of it. This looks really pretty when you have an, a stencil just kind of offset on the cutting boards. And I'm just using my white chalk paint on this stencil and peeling it off and look how pretty that is. Kind of has a boho vibe to it. Seal it up with my polyacrylic sealer. I love it trying to decide how I can keep all of these because how many cutting boards do you actually need in your house? Next one I painted with this rust color and really distressed it and then I took one of my wooden bowls that I had and I cut it in half 
And now I'm going to glue it onto that cutting board. And once it's dry, you can fill it up with a full flower. You can put some utensils in it. You can fill it up with all kinds of different things and display it anywhere in your home. And it looks really pretty. So we're gonna hot glue these with and some E6000, set it aside and let it dry completely. I cut this bowl on my chop saw, but you could also do it on your table saw and it would work perfect to cut them in half. I put a few of my dried hydrangeas in it and I think it looks beautiful. Okay, so this board I had already painted and I used the candle wax method to make it nice and chippy and rustic. I have this beautiful flower market graphic that I'm gonna put on the top of it. We've let it dry completely going to rub the paper off. We're going to be left with a really pretty graphic. And then I am going to put the polyacrylic sealer on and I'd like to hang a little glass jar from the bottom. But I had this little, I'm not even sure what it was, in my stash. Once again, I never throw anything out and I thought it would be a good hanger for this instant coffee glass jar. I've cleaned it all off, taken the labels off, and I'm going to attach it onto that little metal embellishment and hang the jar from it. I'm gonna hot glue the little hanger onto the rim of the glass jar and then wrap some twine around it so it looks nice and pretty. And I had some full flowers that I picked up at the thrift store not that long ago and I thought that would be perfect for this cutting board. I put a little bit of moss in the bottom of that glass jar so it looks like it's a vase full of flowers. Next cutting board, I just wanted to kind of fool around with some different colored stains. I tried this green and then I thought once I got it on the board, it was a little bit too bright. So I mixed up some brown to incorporate in with it. And then I really liked the color of that. It can't, kind of gave it a rustic, really old looking uh, wood, wiped off the extra. And then I have these graphics. I'm gonna put a full length graphic down the whole length of this board. These are in my Etsy store. I'm gonna stack the three of them on top of each other. They're all the same font, so it's going to blend in really well. Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer, let them dry, gonna rub it off, and they should all line up and look really pretty down the length of this cutting board. Seal it up with some poly acrylic sealer. And this is another one that I really love. I just I'm really not sure how many of these I'm going to be able to keep. This might be another one. Now, if you don't want these to be all cutting boards, you can just do a long plank and do those three graphics stacked up on each other and they would look beautiful. The next one we're going to do is a crackle paint with the Elmer's glue. I want some really big cracks in this one. So I'm going to put on quite a thick coat of that Elmer's glue. We're going to venture away from that white and black and I'm going to do some black and red. I think this has a real farmhouse feel, that red color. So I'm going to paint that on top of the Elmer's glue and then we're going to let it set aside and dry and it's gonna crackle beautifully. I printed off this really bold antiques and that's what we're going to Mod Podge onto this one. And then we're gonna rub off the paper and we're gonna be left with a beautiful antique sign. Now this technique on the colored paint and with the crackle paint underneath, it's a little bit of an advanced project. If you put too much water on the graphic when you're rubbing it off, it'll reactivate the glue and it'll rub off. And with the color, it's a little bit trickier to rub all that paper off. So you have to really take your time and do small sections, but love the way that it turned out. And there you have all kinds of ideas and inspiration that you can do with these cutting boards. And like I said before, these are my best sellers right now and they're so easy to create. And you can just do a little bit of a twist on different styles and different designs and create some beautiful home decor. This is a fun way to decorate breadboards if you don't like doing the reverse technique. All you need to do is know how to decoupage. Again, this is just made on some scrap wood I had and it was already painted brown. I cut out the shape and now I'm adding some black homemade chalk paint. 
going in with my hammer and making lots of dings and nicks to make it look rustic and old. There's lots of different ways that you can create texture in wood. A hammer is number one, but you can also use pliers and you can just bang on it and create little holes. You can take it outside and step on it in some gravel, or you can use some chain, just use your imagination. After that, I went back in with my 80 grit sandpaper and distressed it all around the edges. And now we have a really rustic piece of salvage wood that we're ready to decoupage on. And of course, all of these techniques can also be just turned into signs and you don't have to cut into cutting boards. I printed off these graphics. They're all available in my Etsy store. I'll put the link down below in the description and I just love these on the breadboards. I've just printed these off on my laser printer and printed them on regular computer paper. I also have a graphics club, if you're not familiar, on Patreon where you can get weekly graphics delivered right to your inbox. If you're interested in something like that, I can also put a link down below in the description. I'm gonna age these with some instant coffee. This is really easy to do. It's just instant coffee and some warm water. Mix the solution together and then use a sponge and just dab it up and down on your paper and then let it dry. I'm using my heat gun to quicken it up a little bit. Quick and fast way to age paper really fast. I've got out my Mod Podge mat and I'm gonna put a light coat on the top of these graphics. I find by putting this light coat of Mod Podge on first, when you decoupage it onto your project, it helps prevent bubbles and wrinkles. Everything is completely dry and now we're gonna decoupage it onto our cutting board. I'm going to again apply that Mod Podge mat right out to the edges of that piece of paper making sure that it's gonna have a really good seal when we place it on our cutting board. I have a breadboard that I keep in my craft room and it serves as a handy template. Now I have this scrap piece of wood that's full of character. It has nicks and dings and it has that aged look already. I'm simply gonna trace the shape of the cutting board onto it. I can get two cutting boards out of this one piece of wood, making it a really profitable DIY. I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna use my jigsaw and carefully cut out the shapes. Don't worry about feeling intimidated by Jigsaw. They're actually quite easy to use. And if you don't have one already, I recommend checking out your local pawn shop for some great deals. You might be surprised at how affordable they can be. You can also find brand new ones really reasonably priced on Amazon. I'll provide that link down below in the description. Now that I've finished cutting them out, remember not to throw those leftover pieces. We can use them for another DIY project later on. I'll stash them away for now. Next, I'll take these breadboards outside and I'll use some 80 grit sandpaper to give them a smooth, polished finish. These boards already have so much character, so I don't want to sand them too much. I want to preserve that charming, worn out look. Most of these breadboards are primarily intended for decorative purposes. However, if you happen to be working with brand new wood and you know its type, I encourage you to do some research, find out how you can make these boards food grade and suitable for use in the kitchen. It's important to ensure that they meet the necessary standards and are safe for food preparation. To enhance the beauty of these boards, I've decided to use some leftover butcher block from a previous project. I'm applying this oil and it really highlights the gorgeous grain of this wood and the end result 
is simply stunning. For the finishing touch, I'm going to drill a hole in the top, add some twine. One of the breadboards had a crack at the bottom, so I came up with a clever solution to prevent further cracking. I found an old rusty hinge in my stash along with some matching screws. I'm going to attach that hinge right between the crack and the wood. This addition should not only reinforce the board, but it also giving it a charming farmhouse feel. It's these unique touches that make each board one of a kind, and it also helps them sell better. Hope this video was helpful and you got some inspiration.